Modo morsels. Now hang on a minute. These are not the morsels I'm looking for. These are Frodo morsels. I think we all know what happened there. Let's cut to the chase. In this morsel I'm going to look at operators, specifically fall-off operators, which are used to create custom fall-offs for procedural geometry, selection operators, which let you create custom selections also for procedural geometry, particle operators, which modify dynamic particle properties, and array operators, which create new arrays from existing ones. What all these have in common is that they iterate over a collection of objects, be they particles, vertices, edges, polygons, or array elements. They trigger your custom calculation using the properties from these objects, and then you can set some value or values corresponding to each input object. So a falloff operator consumes vertices, or polygons, and converts that information via your bespoke calculation into a weight which is applied to the corresponding component. A selection operator similarly consumes polygons, edges or vertices, and with the associated information you can decide whether to select that component or not. Particle operators are used in dynamic particle systems and apply to each particle in turn. They can be used to modify the properties of the particle for the next time step. Finally, array operators consume an array element by element, creating a new array from those elements. The result array does not even have to be the same type as the input array. Enough of the theory. How does all this work in practice? I've created an assembly with a funky function that I would like to use to displace this procedural plane. I can use the push operation to displace the surface, and then modulate the displacement with a falloff operator. The falloff is added in the tool pipe section. Add it to the schematic. We are interested in the position of each vertex, so I'll add the position channel into the falloff operator. To modulate the effect, we set the weight channel, so it is convenient to separate this. It just makes the diagram easier to read. Connect the position to the black box of my funky function and the result to the weight and we're all done. What a very fine function that is. How about the selection operator? These are added in the selection section. Not easy to say. Since the push is operating per vertex, we'll add a vertex selection operator. And let's use position again. Once again, we'll separate the output channel to help with readability. And let's base the selection on the Z coordinate. We are testing if Z is greater than zero by default, but we can change that to whatever we like. Now on to particles. Here is a very simple particle system with just a single radial emitter. I would like to make these particles bounce, but I don't want or indeed need to use a full-blown physics simulation for that. The idea is to look for particles with a negative y coordinate and then to flip their velocity in the y direction. That is, after all, what a bounce is. And of course we can do this with a particle operator. Notice how it has been automatically added to the particle simulation for us. I'll just quickly hide it to keep the viewport uncluttered. Next, 
we need to add the particle features that we will be reading and writing. In this case, we want the position and the velocity. Particle features come in two flavours, read only and read write. The read only features can be more efficient. Since we will be both reading and writing the velocity, we will need both versions. And now we can do the old separate channel trick. We will be looking for y coordinates less than zero with a conditional node. If this condition is met, we will set the y velocity to minus its current value, and otherwise we will just set it back to what it originally was. To do this, we will use the true value and false value settings in the logical comparison. So let's add those to the schematic and make sure to specify that they be output according to whether the test is true or false. Now we just need to negate the velocity with a subtract node and wire everything up. Let's see if it works. It does. Amazing. Arrays probably need several morsels in their own right, so this account will be brief. I'll first create an array using the array blend operation. It will interpolate positions of two locators, start and stop. The positions are represented by matrices. Notice how the elements are rendered in the 3D viewport when the array blend is selected. This is useful for debugging your arrays. Let's quickly add a few more elements. Let's add some jitter to these positions using an array operator. First, add the operator and connect up the array. Then add the channels that we're interested in. We want the elements, one is input and one is output, and the array index, for reasons that will become apparent in a bit. Guess what? We're going to separate the output element to keep the diagram tidy. To jitter the positions, we will need to compose them with a random displacement. So add a matrix compose and connect the element to it and connect the matrix compose output to the output element. So far we have achieved precisely nothing. To add the displacement we can create it with a matrix construct, making sure that it's set to position. We just need a random offset now and that's what random is for. So that the random number is different for each element we will turn off time as seed and use the array index for the seed instead. Feed the random number into the y coordinate of the matrix construct and the matrix construct into the matrix compose and hey presto! Well, that's a bit extreme, we can fiddle with the random number range according to taste. Jobs are good un. Hopefully this morsel has helped in demystifying Modo's operators. Finally, I'll leave you with this message from our sponsor. Ach, Rosum, ich krimpatum.